got some uh, oh, lamb sausage that we got from Mint Creek Farms. Um, got some cabbage back here. We've got some spetzel. Spetzel. Um, so yeah, it'll be a nice little fall dish today. Jeff Hedden is at the Green City Market to introduce people to his new West Town Belgian bar and restaurant, Leopold, which he says will be open around Thanksgiving. I follow him as he goes to grab a few last items for his dish. Sometimes uh, Smith's Farms is here and they have nice herbs. I don't know who's here today on Wednesday. I've been to Germany, I've been to Belgium, I've been to France, and I just like the northern European style of cooking. It's a little heartier, uh, but it still has some of the refinement that French cooking has. So it's loosely Belgian. It's got some uh, German influence, like today will be a little bit more German influence, just because at the market there's no seafood or anything, and uh, a few Belgian dishes that I want to do has seafood in it. So, so I found the sausage here, and then I just worked off of that. I don't see Smits here today, so I'm going to have to find out where I can get some chives. Hey buddy. Thank you. Uh, Alright, thank you. How are you? you? No problem. Okay. Do you have any herbs today? What kind of herbs would you like? Gift chives or like some green onion that's nice? No. Nothing? Cilantro. That's not gonna work for me. This might work. I'm doing the demo today, and I'm interested in some sort of scallion or Jeffrey. Hi, Jeffrey. I'm Paula. Paula. Hi. Tiny Green. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I would love for you to use our our, uh, and you can taste anything you like. Black onion. Yeah, taste this. I would also suggest this is great and it's beautiful, mm. but I would also suggest adding a little of our red cabbage as a garnish onto your red cabbage because it's so. The colors would be contrasting, and you can kind of, you know, if you're doing a cabbage on cabbage kind of layering thing. It's it's an excitement to see those first ramps or the first asparagus or something in the beginning of the year, and it sort of fuels that creative um, environment for me. Um, I know that 100%. It's tough to use. There's always something that you got to get from a, a larger vendor, but. The highlights of dishes are nice to see coming from the people that you know that grow them. So the Belgian food, tell me how you, where that concept came from for this restaurant. Did it come from you? Uh, the last year I was up at Wits, which is on Lincoln Avenue, and the bartender is really into Belgian beers and small craft beers here in the States um, with that Belgian style. So we decided to throw a Belgian dinner and we worked together in pairing some beers with some food sort of just started happening. Started really looking into it and found that the cuisine is something that we were already big fans of. Started exploring it further and uh, took a trip over there and decided that that was the way to go. Uh, yeah, we just nixed the sinks for the bathroom. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's... That's my 1995 rental apartment sink. <laughs> I think we could. Uh, I think we could probably find something a little nicer. Um, yeah. So, tour: banquets, tables, chairs, grill, fryer, uh, salad, pastry. People get a little bit of a peek into the kitchen um, with our little wall here, which might be, it's fun for some people. It's bigger than Longman and Eagles Kitchen. By about five feet, <laughs> square feet. <laughs> we liked the uh, simplicity of the ingredients, which Jeff is a huge proponent of, as well as me. Um, where, you know, it's not a whole lot of manipulation. Hiring. You're, you're in the process of talking to people, both of you. Yes. Absolutely. A little bit just through industry. Um, some of the guys in the kitchen I've either worked with at other places or currently do. And uh, they're just waiting. Uh, once we know, they'll know. I'm looking for an assistant general manager. Um, someone who can run the floor, run the schedule, run the, run the staff training, pre-shift, inventory, ordering. Um, you know, essentially, I'm also, I also have wits and responsibilities at wits, and so I need to be able to divide my time and have strong management at both locations, so. Just given um, our experience with hiring, oftentimes people can embellish their resumes or um, say that they've got all this great knowledge when really they're just 
lying. <laughs> so we put together a little bit of a quiz just to get a better sense. Of, you know, half the questions are kind of personality questions. The other half are, um, you know, like what are sweetbreads? What are the varietals of Bordeaux? Just so that then we can kind of see, even from a training perspective, where we're starting, where we need to go, and uh, what people's interests are. Um, right. It's like putting a band together. Just because they can play bass doesn't mean they're the right fit for your group. That's good. So tell me how the space works now that we can see a little more with the furniture. Right, so um, coming in, obviously we'll, obviously we'll do a little wind break outside, um, a little lounge area for cocktails, maybe some light bites to eat. Uh, here's where the dining room starts and the lounge ends. Uh, we have 10 seats at the bar. Um, don't look at the plans because nothing is like the plans. My favorite electrician in the world. This is our guy right here. Um, I'm excited to use it. We have a convection oven, salamander, eight burners, uh, a hot plate. Um, so yeah, this is a, this is the workhorse of the kitchen. So are you practicing the dishes now? They won't. We can't have any food in here until right, we, right. We, get, we get the go for it. Um, I'm getting a, a couple of samples in. We'll maybe cook tonight over at uh, the other owner's house. Um, I practiced the dishes about two months ago, so I'd like to get back in the kitchen and you know get everything uh, tightened up. City wants us to put a sneeze guard between the uh, the kitchen and the uh, the patrons in case but they. This is your pass. In case, it? yeah, that's well. See, that's where we're not uh, seeing eye to eye. So what? Uh, I mean, there's, but there's places like this all over town. Yeah, no, where, absolutely. Why, why are they thinking it's needed here? I don't. I don't know exactly. Um, I can speculate off camera for sure. <laughs> this is kind of where, where I always saw myself working with great food and working with great food, uh, an exciting beverage program, but not in a suit, wearing jeans, a little more casual. You get the best of, of everything. You get, we're working with small farmers, we're gonna have an exciting you know, wine list and beer list and cocktails, and you have all those great things that you have in you know, more refined, high-end dining, but the atmosphere is casual, and, and that's just, it makes work fun. A restaurant is a party, it should be a blast, it should be a lot of fun. So what's success gonna be? What, what do you when do you what what will it look like in here and you feel you know hey we nailed it this is this is working <laughs> I think I'll know when I finally sleep yeah. through the night <laughs> but of course once you see people in here enjoying the food enjoying kind of the fruits of our labor you know that's that's ultimately what you want is for people to to see that satisfaction and that's why we're in this industry is to make sure that people are satisfied now how is it um yeah it was all right we got backed up a little bit in the heat of it all um i'm still waiting on that one one more solid person i want to bring aboard um so right now i'm working a station um which is great i mean i get to see how things pick up i get to see um you know how i could work together with the person next to me and streamline it that way i'm it's good to get back on the line and cook again because it's been i don't know at least three months that I was a nine-to-five office guy, and now I'm back in back in the 18-hour kitchen guy. So it's good. Yeah.